Hello, my name is Joe McRae and I'm the Director of Communications at North Staffordshire Combined Healthcare NHS Trust. I'd like to take a few moments, if I may, to introduce you to a really exciting initiative we're introducing in Combined, which we are calling the Unified Knowledge Layer, or UKL. So, what do we mean by the Unified Knowledge Layer? Well, the Unified Knowledge Layer is a whole new way that our people can keep on top of their actions. All their actions, all their projects, all in one place. So why are we introducing such a thing? Well, we're all very busy people, supporting the delivery of outstanding compassionate care, whether we're working in frontline clinical teams or in the corporate services supporting the frontline. And as busy people, it's sometimes difficult to keep on top of all the actions we've signed up to or have been allocated to us. Now, these actions could arise from events or meetings we've attended or projects and programmes we're part of. Sometimes an action could be allocated to us by our manager or a colleague during meetings or maybe projects where we weren't actually present. Now, in this context, we, we've been thinking and we thought, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if we could have one single place we could go to where we could see all of our actions and update and report on the progress without having to wade through hundreds of emails or reports or spreadsheets. And even better, wouldn't it be great if we could receive an automatic notification into our email inbox every time a new action was allocated to us or an update to us due? And from the point of view of those managers, meetings, projects and programmes, wouldn't it be great if we could download all of this information and view it online. And wouldn't it be great if we could have that single place where we could see the current state of those actions instantly updated whenever an individual action provided an update. So, wouldn't that be great? Now, wouldn't it also be great if it was available over the web, securely and, uh, and uh, easily? So we didn't have to come into the office we could look through any web-enabled device securely. And wouldn't it be great if any time anybody uh, updated something, it instantly updated for everybody? And when we're talking about downloads, wouldn't it be great if we could just download it into the normal tools that we use for our day-to-day -day work, Microsoft Word and Excel? So, wouldn't it be great? we could have that. Well, now we can. And that's why as a result of the UKL, there now is such a single place, which enables us a single place available securely on the web, which provides us with instant updates and notifications if something is allocated to us or something needs to be checked, and enables us to update everybody else at the same time as we enter the new information. And something that enables us to download off the web and enables us to download offline to Microsoft uh, Word and Microsoft Excel. So that, in a nutshell, is the vision that we have for the unified knowledge layer. And it's being rolled out across Combined this spring. So let's go from the theory to the actual practicalities. So, how does any of our staff access the UKL? Well, accessing the, the UKL couldn't be simpler. It can be viewed by any browser, on any browser. It could also, uh, you can access the URL by looking on our cat intranet, where there'll be an icon on which you can click. Or it can be accessed in any email notification that you might get to say that you've got, a, you've got a new project or a new program or a new action or something it does. Simply click on the link, we'll take, we'll take you to the URL, uh, to, we'll take you to the UKL. Um, and you can even, if you like, scan using a QR code, which is, a, which is available across, the, uh, across our trust. Now, when you access the UKL, it's integrated with your own trust account. And this is really important 
So, just as we're getting used to agile working and we're getting used to uh, logging in remotely, but securely with two-factor authentication, the UKL works in exactly the same way and is integrated with our people's trust account. So that gives single sign-on. And what that means is, if you're already signed into Microsoft Teams or Microsoft 365, you'll instantly be allowed into the UKL. Now, if you're not already signed into Microsoft 365 or Teams, you'll be asked to sign in with your normal trust email and password, together with the normal two-factor authentication. So that means that it also knows who you are. And that gives us quite a powerful way that each person can see tailored information directly and easily. So that's how you access it. When you access a UKL, you'll be taken to the home screen. And on the home screen are the three initial important, uh, important applications that we're using for UKL. The first is my dashboard. My dashboard is where you'll instantly go and see your actions and your projects and your programs. Meeting Manager. Meeting Manager enables you to access details of meetings, create new meetings and allocate actions to them. And Action Tracker. Action Tracker is a way for you to see actions across the whole of the trust, not just your own. So these first three applications are the opening ways in which we're going to deploy UKL. There are a number of other uh, uh, projects in the pipeline as part of UKL. For example, you see here things like Chase and Active Listener. These will be brought on in, in, uh, on stream later. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on those three actions. Sorry, three new facilities. So let's start with accessing your own action dashboard through my dashboard. So how do you do this? Well, fully enough, the first thing is you access your dashboard. In the dashboard, you can review and filter or search any of your actions. And thirdly, it enables you to update your actions all through my dashboard. So to access my dashboard, couldn't be simpler. If you're on the home screen, you simply click on the icon for my dashboard. If you're anywhere else on the UKL at any time, you can get to it by just clicking on the menu item. When you get to my dashboard, here's how you can review and filter or search your actions. So what you can see here is I've, I'm signed in as myself, Joe McRae, this is my dashboard. And down here you can see that the actions here are all the actions where I am the action lead. Now, you, I can filter all of these actions, okay? And I can filter by any actions between a certain start date or with a deadline end date. I can filter by whom the executive lead position for that action is. I can filter to just show me items that are overdue or not overdue. I can filter according to which team it comes from. And I can filter according to various action statuses. Now we'll come on to this in more detail, the action statuses, but initially they are, that action is either ready to commence, in progress, completed or cancelled. Now each time you filter the, the, uh, the number of uh, the, ch the projects that are related to that filter will change here. Okay, so here for example, you can see here for example, I've got certain start dates for my actions. If I filtered according to a start date um, that only had between uh, March and, uh, and April, you see it's changed and some of the actions have come into, have come into uh, fo uh, focus because they've been applied to the filter. Okay, now you can progressively filter each time. So each time you filter, you can get exactly to the th th things you want. So for example, on these, I could say, okay, so I've seen things with a certain start date or completion date. I also just want to see things that are overdue, or I just want to see things that are completed, etc. You just apply 
each of the filters. And each time you apply a filter, you wait for a few moments for the UKL to, to complete its filtering process, and then it will refresh the page. So that's how you can get to the actions you want. So, how do you update your actions? So the first thing is, um, you can filter your actions directly on the screen. Okay, and the things you can filter on the screen are here. So you can filter, you can, uh, sorry, you can update um, the description. If you click on here, it'll fire up a dialog box. You can update the description. You can filter the start date or the expected completion date if a project has slipped. Or if you've completed the action, you can in, uh, put in the completed date and change the status to completed. Okay. You can also change such things as who is the executive lead for that action if that's changed, or you can change your own action lead. So say for example, if somebody else has taken over responsibility for, uh, for being the action lead for this program, uh, for this project, I can click on here, allocate it to that person, and the next time I go onto my dashboard, that project will not be on my dashboard, but the person who has been allocated the action lead it will appear instantly on theirs. Okay. Now, there are other further details that you can, that, that you can update about an action without going uh, with, uh, going deeper, uh, more uh, into more detail, other than this front screen. And to do that, you simply double click on the action name. You, sorry, before we get to that. There is a but an important button here called Excel Export. And as explained, what you can do here is once you've filtered all the actions, if you want to take that, that away, either to review offline or send to your own manager or send to a team, if you click the Excel Export, it will download an Excel spreadsheet with all of these details for you. Okay, so I've explained that to get to more details, we can have a look by clicking on the actual action. When we do that, it takes us to something which is called the Action Details screen. Now, the Action Details screen is the most important screen at the heart of the UKL. Wherever you are in the UKL, whenever you click down to drill down on an action, it will take you to this screen. And any changes you make to an action via this screen will instantly update across the whole UKL. And in common with everything else on the UKL, when you've made any changes you want, you click, you simply hit the save button and they'll be saved. Okay, so the core tool. So what can we do here in the action details screen? So first of all, we can change those things as the overall name of the action. We can update a description and we can provide updates on what's happening. Okay, and anybody who wishes to see the current state of the action will see your updates and see the description. Okay, so that's the first section. The second details you can do in the action details screen is here where we go back the action origin. Okay, so here you can link actions to spa values or proud to care values. Okay, now in doing so that helps with things like everybody knows with the quality account each year when we need to see what have we done that to to, to um, demonstrate our commitment to being safe or being personalized, or in our practical values, to being compassionate or responsive. Any action that you are the owner of, you can flag that this has a contribution. And then at a later date, when on the reporting system, anybody can see all of the actions, for example, that relate to us being responsible. So it's a really good way in which each individual action owner can keep the rest of the trust updated and people who are collating that information can have it done automatically rather than having to do it as a completely separate ent enterprise exercise. Now, also here you'll see that you can set an uh, action for a project and you can also say whether or not that project is part of a program down there. Now, we'll come on to that later about how to allocate projects and programs. But what that means, of course, is it means that projects and program owners can also see their, all of the actions that relate to those projects and it's all collated automatically. Now, in this, also on the action details screen, 
Here's where you can set who the action was initially raised by, who the executive lead is, and who the operational lead is. And those can be updated from this section within the action details screen. And finally, we, you can update the progress of, of an action. You can set its start date, its target date, its predicted completion date, and its actual completed date. So, let's have a li li look in a little bit detail, more detail, about how you do things on progress. So, progress tracking and reporting is really important. It's one of the core things that the UKL exists to do. So, what, how you set these. When you first create an action, you can create the start date. What is the action by which this action has started or is due to start? You can also set the target date. So set when the action is first created and then set this is the target date that we are setting for this action to be completed. As the action continues and you need to review, you can set what is the predicted completion date. So if it looks like it'd be done before the target date or it looks like it might, there might be some slippage, the action owner can update that each time. And so every, anybody at any time can see how we're we doing against the original date so that we set on creation for, it, for its target, okay? Now, the, as I said, you can set the status to be, it's not started, it's ready to commence, it's canceled, in progress, completed, or archived. Now, what that means is you don't need to necessarily wait until a program is starting to build in the actions already. You can create them with a start date in advance and set it to not started. The action owner will be notified and as soon as the action is started, it can be done to in progress, set to in progress, and you can track it from there. Now, when an action is completed, very simple. First of all, you enter the completion date on which it was actually created. So in the case of this action, we have an action where the target date was the 16th of March. The latest predicted completion date was the 13th of March, but in actual fact, it was completed on the 8th of March. So this enables us to track progress for actions where they were delivered more aggressively, as well as uh, actions where there might be some slippage. And also, what you would then do when an action is completed, you would set status to completed. Now, it's important that everybody keeps this up to date because this is the way in which we automatically report whether or not an action is overdue. And in the UKL, an action is overdue if the target date is in the past, but it hasn't been set as completed. So, that takes us back to the action detail screen. Once you've completed all any changes you want, you hit the save button. You will see a, you will see a uh, little um, thing saying, please wait. And as soon as it is, is updated, it will let you know all the saves are complete. If by any chance you try to uh, leave this screen without having first saved any, any changes you've made, you will, you will be prompted as to whether or not you wish to lose, uh, leave the screen. If you're prompted like that, it means you haven't hit the save button to save any updates. So that's the action detail screen. So now let's look at the action tracker. Now the action tracker is very, very similar to, the, to uh, the, my dashboard, but action tracker looks at all actions, not just your own. And it's also the starting point to actually create new actions within UKL and to assign them to projects and programs. So, how do you access the action tracker? Well, if you remember the home screen, um, you'll remember that action tracker, there is an icon for action tracker. So you can either access the action tracker from the home screen, or if you're anywhere in the UKL, anytime you want to go to the action tracker, you just hit the menu item. So, here is action tracker. Very, very similar, as you will see, uh, from my dashboard, okay? But this time, um, it shows all actions, okay? Again, similar thing. You can filter, um, it, you can filter across uh, various actions and you can filter down and all of that. But very importantly, 
Down here is where you can create a new action. So, let's look at creating a new action. Again, it takes you to the details screen and very familiar, and that's when you then can start to put in, it relates to this spa value, it relates to proud to care, and you can set whether or not it links to a project or a program. So, relate actions to spa or proud to care values, really useful for things like the quality account, okay? Action and projects. Now, what you can do, you can add actions to an existing project or you can create a new project within this screen by clicking on the create a new project button. You can also, when you, when you create a project for the first time, you can set whether or not this project is part of a program and you can create a new program or create a new project and link it to an existing program. Once that project is connected to a program, any action that is allocated to the project automatically will appear in its parent program. So that's how to create actions, how to filter actions, how to update actions, how to allocate actions to our SPA values or proud to care values, and how to allocate them to projects and programs. But as we all know, projects and programs are not the only things that generate actions. Meetings generate actions. And UKL also has a facility whereby we can also log meetings and actions arising from them. And we do that called something called Meeting Manager. So, Meeting Manager. Meeting Manager is a tool within the unified knowledge layer. It allows you to create meeting types, for example, trust board or board committee or executive drop-in or internal team name or inclusion council. There are all types of meetings. Within each meeting type, it enables you to create a new meeting within that type. So each time there is a new meeting of the Inclusion Council, you can create a Meeting Manager page for it. Once you've created meetings, you can add such details such as who's chaired the meeting and who attended. You can then add actions arising from that meeting, and you can log also any positives or concerns that were raised during the meeting. Now, all of these things we've been doing since time immemorial but we've been doing them offline in Word documents in minute, meeting minutes. By doing it within Meeting Manager, it integrates it into the core UKL. All actions created via Meeting Manager are added automatically to the core UKL, meaning that executive owners, executive leads, action owners will see them within their dashboard and they can be searched and filtered. So, how do we access the Meeting Manager? Well, I'm sure you're getting familiar with this screen now and it's all very consistent with everything else. Meeting Manager, you can access via the home screen, via the icon, or if you're anywhere else in the UKL and you want to go to it, you can get to it straightforwardly by clicking on the Meeting Manager menu item. So, when you do that, you will enter the Meeting Manager screen. So here is Meeting Manager. There are a number of areas here. First of all, number one, this is where you create a new meeting, what we call a new meeting instance. Here is where you can select or create a new type of meeting. You can set the teams that took place in that meeting. You can set the meeting name and you can set the date. Once that is set, it will appear in the drop-down list of all existing meetings. And when the existing meetings, you can review things and update, such as the chair, the team who took part in it, the date it took place, the attendees. If you wish, you can put in a link to the papers and, and terms of reference if you wish. That's purely voluntary. Over here is where you can, you can set actions and positives and concerns. Okay? So, Let's look at, take a little bit look at that. How do you create a new meeting or a meeting type? Well, the first thing you do is you either create a new meeting type if it doesn't exist, but first click on the drop down and it will show you all the meeting types that are already in UKL. You can then select any trust team or teams taking part. 
Now the list of teams in UKL is exactly aligned with the teams on ESR, so it's completely integrated with our teams across the trust and our core operations. You give the meeting a name, you set the date, and then you simply click on create meeting. The UK will create the new meeting and they will add it to the list of meetings that are available for you to edit. So, view and edit a meeting, chair and invitees. You select the relevant meeting from the drop-down list. The UK will load and then display the existing details for that meeting, which you can edit. Who's the chair, which teams, which date, who's invited, and papers. Let's look at how you edit and add a meeting action. In this pane, it will show you the existing actions that are here already allocated that meeting. Okay? To update any action, you simply click on the action name in the list, and this will bring you down to the familiar action details screen, which we've already seen. To add a new action, very simply, you click the add action. This will bring up a dialog box where you can put things in such as the action name, the date, the description. Um, and once you, once you create this, it will add the action to that list. You can always see the current positives and concerns from any meeting by clicking on the blue tab here. It goes highlights to show you're in positives and concerns. Um, and in the panel, um, select the title positive and concerns and this will load any existing positive and concerns from the meeting. Okay. Um, again, to edit any details, you can click on the relevant cell in here of, of, any, of any existing concerns, including the description, whether it's a positive or negative, who is raised by. If you wish to create a new positive and concern, you simply click the plus positive and concern. That will bring up, funnily enough, another uh, dialog box where you can say a positive concern, who it was raised by, whether or not it was a positive or a concern, and add the description. And it will then automatically be applied. Uh, applied. So, that's Action Tracker, Meeting Manager, and My Dashboard, okay? Now, I have mentioned that you can export and you can report from, uh, from the UKL. Uh, there are two types of exports and reports. The most common is an Excel download. Now, the Excel download is available on, uh, by the uh, download button on My Dashboard, Action Tracker, or Meeting Manager, okay? Now, um, but there is also a specific one for meetings, and this is called, called in, created in Word, and it's a meeting report. Now, what you can do there is you can select any number of existing meetings, and when you go to export the report, it will, it will provide a report which attendees, any actions, and positive concerns. And that's available via a button on Meeting Manager. So, that's the UKL. So starting this spring, as we're rolling it out, for the first time across the trust, now every single one of our people can access all of their actions, program projects and meetings securely over the web in one place. They can receive automatic notifications into their email inbox when they've got a new action or something needs updating and link directly from that email into the UKL. Any changes that anybody makes on the UKL will instantly uh, be, uh, be shown for everybody. So it's an end to, the, to multiple emails with multiple spreadsheets or multiple Word documents. Everything is done one place, once, instantly. And as explained, it can be viewed on the web or it can be downloaded into Word or Excel. So, Let's finish where we started. Welcome from the comms team and our colleagues who've helped develop the UKL to a place where for the first time we can see all of our actions, all of our projects, all in one place. Thanks very much.